Hello, I'm Lena Taro. In this video, I'll be showing you how to transform data to achieve a linear model on the TI-8384. We'll be using an example that's found in Chapter 12, Section 2 of the Practice of Statistics. To begin, hit STAT and hit ENTER on EDIT. I've already entered the data in List 1 and List 2 on my calculator. In List 1, we have the distance from the sun in astronomical units. And in List 2, we have the period of revolution in Earth years. Notice the value of 1 here and 1. That's the data for Earth. Let's begin by taking a look at a scatter plot. I'm going to begin by hitting y equals, and I'm going to clear out any equations I see here. We don't want them to be on our scatter plot, so hit clear. Next, let's define our scatter plot. Hit second, y equals. We're going to turn plot 1 on, so hit enter. So hit enter on on. Our type is scatter plot. Our x's are in list 1, our y's are in list 2, and we're ready to go. Let's hit zoom. Stat, option 9. We can see that this has a slight curve to it, so a linear model would not be a good fit. Next, we're going to see if either an exponential model or a power model might be better. To do this, let's first begin by transforming both list 1 and list 2 by taking the natural log of each list. To do this, hit STAT, enter on EDIT, go over the, to the very top of list 3, and we're going to de define list 3 to be the natural log of list 1. Hit LN, then hit 2nd and the 1 button to get list 1. In list 4, we're going to, f to define to be the natural log of list 2. Once again, LN, then 2nd, and hit the 2 button. So list 4 is the natural log of the period of revolution, and list 3 is the natural log of the distance from the sun. To see if an exponential model would be a good fit, let's plot L4 versus L1. So let's go back to our stat plot, hit 2nd, y equals, hit enter on plot 1, and down here where it says y list, we're going to change that to list 4. Hit zoom, and choose option 9, zoom stat. This isn't much better. We can see that this data set clearly has a curve to it. So rather than working with L1 and the natural log of list 2, let's use the natural log of both lists. Let's see what that power model might look like. So we go back to our scatter plot, and I'm going to change this to list 3, which was the natural log of the distance from the sun. And list 4, once again, is our natural log of our period of revolution in Earth years. Zoom stat, option 9. That looks to be much more linear. Let's create a linear model for our transform data. To do this, hit stat, go over to calc, and we'll choose option 8, y equals a plus bx for linear regression. My x's are stored in list 3 now. It's the transformation of our original x values. Our y's are in list 4. That's our transformation of our original y values. And I'm going to store my equation in y1. So I hit vars, go over to y vars, choose enter on function, and then y1. Notice that that was a lot of syntax to remember. However, if you have operating system 255 or later, and you have your stat wizard turned on, you won't need to remember that syntax. Let me show you what I mean. Hit mode, go down to the very, very bottom here, and turn your stat wizard on. Also, if you don't see an R and R squared value, make sure your diagnostics are also turned on. Let's do this again. Second quit to get out of there. Stat, calc, choosing option 8, it gives us a template to fill in, but I need to change my X list to be list 3 and my Y list to be list 2, or excuse me, list 4, not list 2. Down here for regression equation, we're going to hit VARS, Y VARS, 
and store it in Y1. The reason I would store my equation in Y1 is I might want to use that equation to make predictions. Next, let's take a look at a scatter plot of the residuals. When you do a linear regression, the residuals are automatically calculated for you and stored in a list called resid. Let's hit second, y equals to access our stat plot. We'll keep our x list as list 3, but let's change our y list to the list of residuals. To get that list, hit second, stat, and choose option 8 for residuals. Hit enter, and choose zoom, zoom stat we can see that our residuals have random scatter. Finally, let's use our regression equation to predict the period of revolution of Eris, whose average distance from the Sun is 102.15 astronomical units. Begin by hitting second, mode, to get back to the home screen. Then we're going to take the natural log of 102.15. Remember, we transformed both the Y and X values when we came up with our linear model. Next, we're going to substitute this value into our regression equation. Remember, we stored our regression equation in Y1. To access Y1, we'll hit VARS, go over to YVARS, choose Function, then choose Y1. Then, I want to substitute this answer that I see on my screen into that equation. So I hit second, and then the minus sign to use the previous answer that's on my screen. Finally, to find the answer to our question, the period of revolution for Eris, we need to take e to this power. To access e, we're going to hit second, then the natural log button, and then we want to use this power, so I'm going to hit second and the negative sign to use that as the answer. So it would take about 1,032 years for Eris to make one complete revolution around the sun.